Sin is not this grievous thing that church said you're a sinner. The sin means you miss the mark. It means a guy who's taking a bow and shooting an arrow out, and he misses the target mark, the things that no one can see. Is God putting the sin on you? No. You're being attacked by the enemy because of your injustice and your unfairness. You have left the covering. He will never put sin on you. He's wanting to heal you. But how does he heal you? He heals your heart first. To whom much is given, much is required. shout Jesus we love you this morning we thank you for your presence awesome I love the way you brought us all hymns in it was fabulous 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 thank you for ministering to us in that way okay what time is it yes I can't hear you yes that's awesome okay okay so today we're getting to the crux of Malachi that everyone takes it from and that is this challenge that God puts to his people. And the challenge is not about, it's not about you, but it's about his love. It's challenging you for you to know that he is worth it. If he can give his only begotten son, I mean, he's given his best, he's given his all. He's challenging you to give his best, to be a partaker of giving the best, okay? And so, therefore, it goes on like this. I think many people have heard this before, but he talks about how... He has been robbed because God gives his best. And when we don't, he feels robbed. And you're talking from a heart space, a personal space that God is speaking from. Very, um, very anthropomorphic. Okay, verse 8. Verse 8. Malachi 3, verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. And what is this? What is he going to end with? He's going to end up with tithe and offering. Okay, tithe and offering. I remember when um, I watched Oprah Winfrey 15 years ago, when, I know before maybe she put out The Secret and stuff like that. The Secret is not bad, I mean, it's okay, but uh, she was once a very, very strong believer that got her to the place where she was. And someone asked her the question, like, what makes you the richest and most powerful person in the world? And she says, I tithe every day to my church. I'd make sure that 10% of what, a tithe is 10%, 10% I have is not mine, it's God. And, he, and this Malachi is talking about the tithe. He says, in what way have you robbed me? This is like a partner telling a friend or his partner in a company, hey man, I didn't get my fair share. That's all. You, you get it? And so she say, he says, you have robbed me. In what way do you say you robbed me? Verse 8, in tithes and offerings. Is it there? Come on, say this with me. Say tithes and offerings. So tithes are different and offerings are different. Okay? So when I say the altar people stand, when I say those who are in the altar stand, and come and bless the offering sometimes, that is not the tithers. Do you understand that? Those are people who have gone beyond the tithe into the offering, okay? And I want many of you to go beyond your tithe into the offering. The tithe is great, but the offering is what supports all the whole ministry. The tithe supports all the rest of it, but the offering is what is important. So tithes is 10%, but go beyond the tithe into the offering. If you want to see bounty come into your life, if you want to see fear go away, if you want to see things break, go from tithe into offering, okay? We're going to talk about a story like that today, all right? So, in what way have you robbed me? Tithes and offering. 
Listen carefully. Okay, now, guys, massage your heart. Okay, <laughs> massage your heart. These are Old Testament wor words, but I have to read it. It comes from a holy book. Okay? And so people wonder, why, why is this happening to me? Why have I lost my money? And why have I lost this? And why have I lost that? And he said, because you're cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes, he says. Bring the tithes into the storehouse. See, when you partner with God, you have to acknowledge at one point that it's not you. That God is the one who gave you the power for wealth. So when things go wrong in your life, it's important to look at your finances and say, my God, how did, this, how did I manage this? Oh, you know what? I partner with God. I want to partner with Him. It's worth it for me to partner with Him. And that taking that sanctifies your business again. It sanctifies your career again. It sanctifies your life again by taking what you believe that has been made out of your own power and saying, God, I didn't make this out of my own power. I made it just because of you. You see, that acknowledgement is amazing. So he says, he says now, bring your tithes into the stores, verse 10. That there may be, that there may be food in my house. And try me. And this is the challenge. And this is amazing. I hear it constantly at churches, but it's worth saying it again. I see it constantly. It's what made me tithe. When I saw this, and one pastor at a church that I used to go, he said, he says, God calls a challenge to you. And says, test me in this. If you don't give your tithe and offering, see if I won't do this. And this is what he says. He says, bring your tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. This is the house of the Lord. And now, try me in this. Do you see this word, try me in this? It means that he challenges you and he says, try and see. You want to see if I'm real? People ask the question, how do I know God is real? Try him in this. How do I know God is real over my life? I don't see the blessing on my life. Try him in this. And he, it's a, it's a covenant keeping God because after that, after you do that, if you are not blessed, after you give a tithe and offering, if your businesses don't break out, if your, if, your, if your work doesn't improve, don't come to church. That's what he's saying. Don't believe in him ever again. Walk away and say God doesn't work. Yeah, you can give a good clap for that. That's what he's saying. Don't ever come to church again. You can forget about the person called God. This is the one thing he says. Try me in this. I know when I heard Oprah Winfrey say that, and then I heard my pastor say it, from that time onwards, Fiona and I have always made sure that our tithes and our offerings are given to church. Honestly, we have never seen a day with lack. We have been bountiful. Not had, it's not like we've not had difficult times, but we've had difficult times, but God has come true every single one of them. He's raised the standard every time I feel, okay, my God, if we might lose it, I get better and greater all the time. This is the one thing he challenges you with. Why does he challenge a man with this? Because he says the other man, other part, the one who is against him, the other God of the world is not the devil. The other God of the world is money, is mammon. So this is the one that you will be challenged with. This is the one you get offended with. This is the one you say, no, I, I don't think that's right. This is the one, my friend. Okay? And that is why it's so important to, to speak this challenge out. And he says, now try me in this. And this is what he will do when the tithes and offerings are bring, brought. This is what he does when he knows that you are not bowing, bowing down to the God of the world called money and mammon. This is what he does. I will, he says, try me in this now. And I will open the windows of heaven. I will pour out such a blessing. Do you just see there? He says, I will pour out such a blessing that there will be no room enough to receive it. And I love this one. I love this one. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. That means the one who's trying to kill, steal, and destroy in your life, in whatever area, from finances to health or whatever it is. He says, because now I am your partner and you acknowledge me. And isn't he a great partner? Today in Sri Lanka, we don't go into partnerships unless we have 51%. Now, come on, you know that, right? Business people, you know that, Ravi. I mean, you won't touch a business if your guy is giving you 10%. We won't touch it. You're like, are you crazy, 10? You go, I'm going to put money in. I'm going to do all my work and you're going to give me 10%? Because you can change the board and you can throw me out? No way. We asked for 51% today. God asks for 10%. What a reasonable, loving God. He says, 10% is mine. And then offerings on top of it. And that can be what you decide. But 10 is his. And we live our lives like that. 10% is God's. I can't rob him. Okay? And so he says, he will then rebuke the devourer for your sake. He will rebuke means he will make sure the one who is killing, stealing and destroying and corrupting and destroying your businesses and your lives will be rebuked. Hmm? How many times 
When things go wrong, I said, God, do you know that I've given my money, I've given my time, I've given my effort, I've given my all to you. How many times I reminded him of that and God has saved me? Remind him of the offering. You have a right with this challenge. If he doesn't keep his word, you have a right to say, God, how come I'm in this trouble? I gave. Do you know that my prayers many times have been like that? I gave. I kept according to your word. And then he says, I'll destroy, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Is it there? Nor shall the wine fall to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Is it there? And all, and all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of angel armies. The word there is sabbat. It means the God who owns all the angels speaks this word to his church. The one who owns, Lord of hosts, who owns all the angels, says his word and promises to you. Now, if you've never ever given a tithe, and okay, if you've given a tithe, then you want to upgrade your offering, this is the time you change your heart and say, God, make me one of those in church. I want to be a part of that company, okay? And come on, come here and sow your offering. Stretch your hand at the offering. Put your hand. Father, we praise you. We honor you, Lord. We humbly sow our tithes and offerings to you, Lord, knowing that it can't compare to your wonderful son and what you did. But Lord, we so desire to be partakers of your suffering and your cost. Lord, let this represent our life, church. Prosper every seed that is in this. Come on, church. Do you say yes? Yes. yes. Prosper every seed. Every seed. Prosper it, multiply it back unto them. Lord, I remember the altar group in Sri Lanka, and I remember, come on church, bless them. I remember the altar group across the world, in the USA and across the world, who help our church, Lord. People who give beyond their tithe and their offering, oh God. Father, bless them. May they increase, may they get double and triple and multiply them a thousand times, oh God. We thank you for those who obey your voice. And here's, I want to call Philip, Philip, please come. This young man is my closest friend and my brother. My birthday on his, is on his brother's birthday, the one who passed. His family, he's stuck by me through thick and thin. And he's always, always been there when I call, always. And therefore, I want to give Philip the mic. He's going to talk, share about a prophecy about India and what's happening there. You know, he's a, he's a local architect, but he brought the largest export, architectural, architectural export earnings to, to the country, to this country. Yeah, come on, give a big hand. He's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, what, you, he's what you call a legend, living legend, okay? Largest, uh, uh, he built a city in Oman. And when, I, when he went into India, we prophesied, we said, India is going to get to know your name. You're going to be so famous there. So it's just been one year now? One year? Less than a year? Yeah. You want to say? You want to say? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is a testimony, really, just yeah. not about what God did, but but yeah. about the prophetic. Yes. In this in this church, because um, you know, for me, Kirby is like my brother. Yeah. For me to call him prophet probably was the most difficult thing, right? Especially today is the first day I'm going to call him prophet, Kirby. Oh, man, yeah. Right. Absolutely. And on, uh, yeah. and I realized that. You know, I can't draw on his prophetic if yeah. I don't see him as a prophet. He can't draw on my architecture if he doesn't see me as an architect, awesome. yeah. right? Awesome. Yeah. And uh, this church, you know, we, this church was built on prayer, right? Yeah. And I was thinking today that I can't remember a single day, Fiona, you know, that we ever prayed for finances. Yeah. Our That's prayers, right. you know, we prayed six times a That's week right. That's right. every yeah. morning. Five o'clock right? in the morning. Five in the morning on weekends. Morning, yeah. We would uh, meet at 8 o'clock on yeah. Saturday and go on till 11. Yes. Right? And yeah. every single prayer on those six yeah. days. And then in the evenings again. Yeah. Sometimes at least Absolutely. twice Absolutely. twice Absolutely. a week. Twice, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And every single prayer was never, ever about our finances. Amen. Right? It was always, it was one prayer about intimacy. We want to see you more, Lord. We want to encounter you more. And it was Amen. like we would go relentlessly for hours. Amen. And just the word that Kavi was talking about, this word that uh, we, we got for India, uh, you know, he, I mean, I think from the time he began, almost for the last 12, uh, just a few years after, he's been continuously prophesying over me about India. 
Amen. And at that time, you know, Modi was not in power. India is now taking off. I mean, if you guys don't know, just go there and yeah, see what they're up to, yeah. right? Absolutely. It's taking off and it's going to be a first world country oh, man. Come on, very yes. soon, right? Yes. And, uh, man. When Kirby kept prophesying, and I, I used to go to India often, I didn't see much potential. I didn't see what was happening there. And then just this one last year, suddenly we were able to set up a company. People came to partner with us. And more than anything, you know, one of the things Kirby said was, you're going to be famous. And I thought, okay, a country of 1.4 billion people, yeah. how are you going to be yeah. ever made for you? This has to be supernatural. I didn't even have the faith. I didn't even take it into my mind. Absolutely. Right? But it's unbelievable, I mean, how God has just set up different people. We are, we are designing for all the who's who, right, right. in, in the south of India. That's amazing. And it's just mind-blowing because it's not, you know, for me to start designing for the top families in Sri Lanka, it took like 25, 30 years wow, of working, so cool. So cool. Uh, getting our yeah. name known, getting our work out there and people to see it. Here, nobody saw our work. Nobody knew anything. It's just telephone call after telephone call wow. of people calling us. So this is wow. just an endorsement, guys, about the prophetic, about Prophet Kirby, right? And about what it is because it's important. It's the same way that I think I was thinking, uh, you know, people in this country, the Christians prayed for a transformation in this mm. country and a change. Yes. And now the change has happened and yeah. suddenly yeah. they are all flabbergasted. Yeah. Right? That's right. It's the same way I know for years the church prayed for a reformation Amen. and suddenly the reformation comes in this packaging Amen. and they can't accept it. Amen. Right? Amen. It's the same thing. Amen. Right? Yeah. Anyway, bless you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I, I, I just love what Philip said before, before we, because it's so important. Because this is a, this is not a choreographed church. Okay, I, we never wanted to have that type of choreography. When you go to churches, you like, oh, have eyes to see and ears to hear. You'll understand what I'm say, talking about. A choreographed church is a fake church. You see, you need an organic church, and we've learned very well from my spiritual father to have things organic. Okay, we can have it so formal here that it's all set up, but you get performance. Yeah. And then the pastor and the prophet or whoever he's called is just a performer. It's just an event. Okay, there is no title like that that you have to call me here. It's an acknowledgement. And I, I'm so glad that a brother and a friend, because he's, he's known me from like, he's known me, we grew up together. We, 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 were, thir we were 20 people in a room. You understand that? Yeah. He was called prophet before I was called prophet. That's the truth. Yeah. Okay, so please understand that it's not a choreographed church. It's a church that really God moves. God is really in this house. It's truly a house of miracles. It truly works. Because when God is in the place, you don't have to meddle. You have, don't have to make things formal. It becomes formal because God does it in his time. Do you understand that, guys? Okay, so guys, will you please welcome my wife. She's got another positive theology. Her back, her back is healed. Her back is healed. Yeah, it's awesome. I think. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Wow. Uh, welcome to Wow. I feel like out of out of my this thing because I'm supposed to be welcome, you guys. Um, come on, can you give it up for the bandies? Wasn't that beautiful? That session of worship was so special. Priska, Shane, Julius, all of them. Every single one of them. Um, as soon as I walked in, I saw Uncle Loni standing. I'm like, oh, he's standing. And then he's like, I love her voice. Who is that? So then I had to pay. I'm like, oh, that's Priska. <laughs> oh, wow. It got him to stand up in worship. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so just... just this is your dose of positive theology, okay? And, and I'm trusting that it's going to undergird what Kirby is talking about. Um, and to give you a reminder of what he's talking about, he's talking about healings, okay? So we're talk we, we went from works of wonder, uh, uh, healing, signs and wonders. So we're dwelling and swimming in these waters so that we can understand things better and we can walk into a higher reality of trust in God and step into these things, right? So um, I don't know if you recall, but... I thought this was important. This is why I chose this topic for the day. Um, you know, the, 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 the parable, the, not the parable, the healing of the man who was paralyzed, right? And he says, you know, would it be better if I said, 
be healed or your sins are forgiven. Okay, so this, this, this uh, scripture, and I remember being very offended about it at certain times because when someone is sick, the last thing you want to feel is like I've done something, right? I have sinned and so now I'm like this. Right? And the worst thing to do is to go up to somebody like, okay, you're sick, you know, just, just ask for your sins to be forgiven. So the, you get even more condemned because everyone's done something, right? And then, so you, you kind of think like, what, what did that person do to deserve it? And why am I healed? You know, when, and, and it brings a whole lot of different nuances. And I thought it's really important for us to just grasp some kind of understanding of sin and what it means, and, and what Jesus probably meant when he said that, okay? So, um, to do that, I want, to, I want to first talk about the parable of, you know, the prodigal son, yeah. right? And so everybody knows about the parable, but I'll just sum it up because I know we have a mixed audience. Um, so it's from Luke 15, right? And it's a story, in a nutshell, paraphrased by Fiona, um, in a nutshell, it's a story about a father and two sons, okay? And in the story, one son uh, decides to tell his father, I want my inheritance early. You know, give it to me early, you know. I'm going to take it from you and let me go and like build my life. Let me go independently and do my thing, right? So he takes everything from the dad and he goes and eventually what happens, you know, the story, he spends everything. He ends up, you know, with absolutely nothing and there's a famine and no one wants to help him and he keeps getting pushed further and further down a ditch, so to speak, right? So he, from, from one place he moves into like the pigsty and then he becomes, and it shows his consciousness diminishing to even accept anything, like even what the pigs eat, right? So, and then he decides, oh my God, life would be even better if I went back to my father's house, even as a slave. Right? Not in the capacity of a son. And he goes back and the father steps out and receives him and walks to him, welcomes him, kisses him, puts a ring on his finger, you know, sacrifices one of his um, uh, goats, you know, cooks up a feast and has a party for the son who was lost and who came back. Right? And then there's the other son who's standing there. And he's wondering, what's all the commotion? What's all the, you know, what, what's all the celebration about? And they're like, don't you know your brother's come home? He was lost and he's come home. And then he gets jealous in his heart. And he starts comparing and he starts thinking, you know, I have been here all my life. I have listened to my father. I've stood by him. I've been obedient to him. And he has never thrown a party for me. You know, and he starts having this jealousy in his heart and his father says, come on, son, you were always here. Everything I had was always yours, right? There was no doubt about it. And we should rejoice and celebrate because your brother was lost and now he's found. And so a lot of people, uh, uh, because some Bibles call it the, the parable of the prodigal son, but that's not what the scripture originally said. It was just a heading put there by um, uh, whoever published the Bible. Um, I think it's more appropriate and, uh, to say the parable of the lost sons, plural. Okay? The parable of the lost sons. Both were lost. Okay? And I think the focus should be more on the father and how everything he had was always yours. Right? And if you do happen to take your inheritance and run off, he will come up to you when you're ready and he will always receive you back. Okay? And so I think, okay, so where does sin come into this? You know, in context to these two. And so remember, we spoke about sin being a theological concept and not a moral concept, right? Uh, sin is a theological concept and if you look at sin from the Garden of Eden, from Genesis, right, from the first place it's mentioned, what you'll see is that Adam and Eve didn't have any moral failing at first, okay? All they had was, um, they had, God had promised them different things and given them certain direction. And what they did was they decided, okay, God has spoken certain things, but perhaps, you know, we can't trust him enough to abide by those things because what we see looks so much better 
You know, let me handle this on my own. And so they reach out and, I mean, the whole world knows the story. But what you need to take away from that is that sin then therefore could be described as distrust. Okay? Suspicion, distrust, uh, unbelief in his love, in his goodness, in his faithfulness, um, in who he was over their lives. Okay? So, now this is not something we, I pluck from a tree, right? It's something that Martin Luther himself, uh, in the Reformation, found himself having to describe. Okay? That sin is a theological concept first and foremost. Because a lot of people were outwardly looking really pious. And they were, um, you know, acting really moral. Maybe, whether they were or not is questionable. And they were outwardly so, uh, looking so holy, but the whole church had gone so far away from God, the medieval Roman Catholic Church. Okay, it had gone so far away from God. He was like, how do we describe this? Like, how do I explain this spiritual thing to earthly minded people? And so um, there was something called the Heidelberg Disputation in 1518. I know everybody knows Martin Luther for his 95 thesis, but this was his greatest, probably greatest theological work. Okay, where he went on to describe uh, the theology of the cross. But what you need to take away from this is he referred to, he was trying to pinpoint what sin is. Okay, because they were looking and they couldn't discern what it was. And he said, listen, it's not a moral issue. Right. Now, right. it's huge. Now, can distrust lead to a moral issue? Yes. Okay? And if you look at anything in your life, it comes, any problem in your life, it comes from a place of, I didn't trust God enough. I thought I had to take control. I thought I had to do my part um, and God does his. You know, Not that you're not supposed to participate in the, in the work of God. I'm not saying sit there and do nothing. But I'm saying you are counting your effort okay, and mistrusted God in that area, whatever that area may be. And so well, let's look back at the prodigal son, the, the two lost sons. And what you realize is, okay, one was, both were distrustful. One was distrustfully disobedient, and the other one was distrustfully obedient. Okay? And, and so you realize, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> it can be so... It can look like one thing to the world, because if you ask anyone in the world, they'll tell you, this is the bad son, this is the good son. Right? This is good, this is bad. Because we're still trained from Genesis, that theological error that happened when they sinned, to discern, to look at good and evil in a very immature way. Right? So we're still looking at things like good and bad, good and bad. Right? So when you think about healing, when you think about what's going wrong in your life, you often think, what am I doing good? What am I doing bad? What am I doing good? What am I doing bad? What are we doing together here? We are getting together as a community, okay? Because we want to build our faith. We want to know our God. We want to receive him in all his fullness, okay? We're prob we don't even know how much we've got of him. Like we're, we trust we have him, but it's not that he's holding back from us. Right? It's that we are getting out of our condemnation, our mistrust, our distrust, because we are, our eyes are being enlightened. We are realizing our salvation. Okay? There is nothing left for him to do. He has done it all. The father was always good. But one son was prematurely decided to take everything and go and, go and do it on his own. And the other son was always there experiencing his goodness, but never trusting the goodness of his, of, of his father. And so we're here together trying to build our faith, trying to stir him up inside of us so that the eyes of our understanding are enlightened. So we will know and we will see. And, and in doing so, we will trust. We will trust. And maybe it'll happen in glimpses or whatever. Maybe you'll learn to trust him in your health. Maybe you'll learn to trust him with your future, with your career, with your relationships, with your finances. Maybe you learn to trust him more. Because there is an abundance of grace. An abundance of love. And that's why we believe in the fullness of life. There are no limitations with him. 
okay? And it's not meant for you to sit and, and be condemned on your own because I, I know the, the current, uh, mod, in modernity, like currently people think very individualistically. Yeah. Right? So when you say, oh my God, I don't trust God, so this is happening to me, don't think of it individually. Right. Yes, your individual self has power, but it's a community. It's a body. Yeah. One cell on its own is, is going to make a difference, but not enough. Okay? But it'll be exponentially spread, sparked up in each and every part of the body and will come alive to realize this magnificent, wonderful God that we have. And we will learn to trust and have faith and walk in that goodness and that grace and that belief. And we will see the goodness of God in every area of your life, in the land of the living. Okay? All right, so... Are you ready now? Are you ready for your Sunday morning dose of goodness? All right, give it up for Prophet K. <laughs> you can change the world, Wildlife Church. We are busy doing it. Get ready. This is going to be an awesome word. Take a seat. Okay, so this is going to be we, uh, we can, can I have 1 Corinthians uh, uh, 12, right? Uh, the one we're talking about, uh, uh, apostles, prophets, healers, all that. Okay, let's, let's, let's look at this. Okay, this is going to be great. And we're going to get healed today. How many of you are going to get healed? Yes. How many are ready to get healed? Yeah? I remember Cobus used to uh, take people off the crutches. One day, uh, I, I can show you a video of Cobus. And um, that's where we got the impartation from. And um, he would literally... Um, the, the, the person will be on crutches and he'll literally look at, him, look at the person and say, uh, have you come to get healed? That's the first question, okay? And uh, so they will say, yes. The lady will say, yes. Then he'll say, okay, then walk. There was no prayer. There was no praying. They're like, okay, then walk because you come to get healed. There was nothing, there was not one prayer. You will very rarely see Cobus pray over the sick, okay? And um, uh, I remember at that time, we used to do the same thing, but he had trained his people very well because he understood, they had listened to him, they knew, okay, if you come to get healed, then get up and walk, okay? And it was a joy to see my father walk the last minute. I don't know how many of you saw my dad walk, yeah? Yeah, he, he just got up and walked because yeah. I didn't even pray for him. He just got up, he walked, and he broke into my uh, room with uh, Auntie Nela because he just <laughs> said, hey, I've come to get healed. Yeah, he says, how's the miracle? It's like, let me walk, okay? Yes, you see, so... Healing can happen in one second, but there are, there are dynamics. It's, it's complex. It's complex. And that is why we preach and teach on healing. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to show it to you here, okay? So listen carefully to uh, now this aspect of it, okay? Now we're concerned spiritual gifts. Where is it? Okay. Okay, yeah. Okay, here we are. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. Am I correct? So the, Holistically body, but your members individually as well, right? And God has appointed these in the church. First, come on, shout it out. Apostles. Come on, I can't hear you. Second. Okay. What is third? Okay. Fourth. Fifth. I can't hear you guys. But you, give, what, what, what is fifth? Healings. You see there? Healings is first. Then helps. Then administrations. Okay. You see, and when I say helps, it, it's actually giving, givers. We're going to talk about that after we get from healing, okay? Then helps, okay, because after healing, I'm going to talk of giving. It's going, when I talk of giving a lot of you, a lot of you, your finances will change, okay? Because what is giving? It's a part of the church. It's a part of, just like a pastor, a teacher, an apostle, a prophet, there are givers, okay? And so you see how far down givers are, okay? If, I mean... You, you see, are all prophets, are all pro apostles. So you can see tongues, variety of tongues. Everyone should be able to do it. Like 100% of the church should be doing tongues. They should be able to do it, okay? They, it's, it's easy, it's not hard. Those are like simple things. Administrations, like serving in the door, helping out, okay? Managing situations, managing wow, wow, managing this, managing that, being a part of different ministries. Everyone is given that gift. Do you understand that? Yeah? When it comes to healing, 80% of the church should be able to heal and get healed, both. 
Okay? It should not be one man. That is why I don't like when one guy sits in front and says, come on, line up, I'm going to heal you. Because that is completely contrary to what church is. Today, you are going to heal yourselves. Are you ready? Yeah? Okay? Because it should be absolutely normal. And that's why I'm going to teach on healing. Because once you know it, it's easy to do it. Do you get it? And it, there is no difference between a cancer and a headache. All, same thing. God doesn't, they, God, come on. God doesn't understand the difference between a thousand dollars and a billion dollars. Do you know that he doesn't, he doesn't, he, not that he doesn't understand, he doesn't care about, but it's a thousand. It's just your fate. You can think of a thousand dollars. That's the problem. Okay, he can think of a billion, but when you can think of a billion, you get the billion. The same way cancer and headache is the same thing. It's how you look at it. Okay, it's a point of view. Everything from heaven, everything from God is just a different point of view. Okay, that's, that's very important to get it. Okay, what is healing? It's just a different point of view. That's all. That's all. Believe me, every miracle, every, everything, especially healing. Healing is a different point of view. It's a different perspective on how you see things, okay? I, believe me, as you see it from that perspective, your body starts responding differently because a different point of view is the, that you are not perpetuating the old pattern. That's as simple as that. And trust me, I'm not coming from a place that I don't know, okay? I was, I was uh, uh, bitten by, uh, by a certain type of insect some time ago, and for one year, uh, I went into anaphylactic shock, and from anaphylactic shock, uh, I came out of it with like a, a system, a, hand, a problem in my hand that would constantly shake. And then they said it might be Parkinson's, this, that, all kinds of issues. For one year, I couldn't hold my phone. It was like this in my hand. Okay? And so all I needed for me to be healed okay, was a different point of view. And I remember at that point of time, I thought at one point, I, really, I, I was invited for like probably my, my, my big show. I was invited. I was on the stage with Heidi Baker, Lance Wellnow, uh, who's the other guy, the guy with the uh, nice hair, Todd White, okay, and Kirby DeLanro. On the same stage, yeah, no one in Sri Lanka has ever done that, yeah? And so, so I, I, I was like, wow, this is like my big, big, it's my big entrance, okay? And uh, George and George Banner was here, he'd opened the door for me for that. And you know, at that time, I was sick. And my hand was shaking. And I was thinking, I remember I, I, I went to Todd White's session uh, thinking, I won't last till I'm 60. Because now, now they've said Parkinson's or something like that, so I'm like 40 something years old, yeah? And I'm thinking, oh my God, can, maybe I should go for prayer. Maybe I should go for prayer. And you must understand. So I, I've gone through this. I mean, it was not possible. It wasn't possible that I should get healed. Okay. But I remember God gave me a different point of view, a revelation. And a revelation happened, not at a conference, but somewhere else. I was, from there, I went to Canada on a five day program. And I picked up the word, like this, shaking away. And I'm going to, I'm, and I'm, no one knows. I'm the big guy, I'm prophesying like accurate words, super accurate words. And then I picked up the, the Bible and I got a new revelation. This house is full of new revelation. And when I saw it in a new way, bang, my hand got healed. And it didn't happen, bang, it's just constantly, just the first day we're like, wow, Fiona, it stopped shaking. I, I, the electricity thing is gone. And then two days later, it comes back again. But then it was much less, much less, much less. And by yeah. Yes, yes, I can give it again. Yeah. When, when that insect bit me, I, I nearly died. You must understand that. I nearly died. Anaphylactic shock. I went completely blind, all that. So you must understand this. Okay. Uh, Ruchi was there. Nishan was there at home. You know? Fina was there. She raised me up. She raised me, literally raised me from the dead. She prayed for me. Okay. Right. So you must understand, like, so I, I understand, and these are just one, one part. I'm just trying to explain about healing. So, but the point of view, and here's the interesting thing about this point of view. So, so healing is for everybody. The gift of healing is everybody. Any, anyone can heal. It should be 80% of the church should be healing, and 80% of the church should be able to receive healing. And if, you, if it's not happening, then it's because then we, you don't know the teaching. We've not received the fullness of the teaching. And I'm going to, take you, I'm, I'm going to show you these things, but it's important. So the gifts of healing, now we've done miracles. Okay? How many of you enjoy miracles, yeah? Okay, then 60% of the church should be able to do signs and wonders. You got it? And then it gets lesser and lesser, okay? 30% of the church should be able to do teachers. 20% of the church should be able to prophesy. 
10% of the church should be apostolic, like that. You get what I'm trying to say. It's first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, okay? So then now it's increasing in number. After that, miracle workers, so 60% of the church, at least 80% of the church healing, health and administration, 90% of the church should be involved in ministries, all that, and be working on the ground. You should be involved, okay? And then everyone should be able to talk in tongues, interpret tongues, have experience with God, okay? It should be everyone. Is that okay? Now, now watch this. Why I'm saying this is because it's important because if you go into chapter 13, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, why do we need all these gifts? And this is the most important thing. Just have a look at this. Okay, this will blow you away. Why do you need to get healed today? That's a good question. Oh, because Jesus loves me and because he wants to heal me. Yeah, individualistic. Okay, that's why probably you're not getting healed. Okay, God loves you. But God heals very prophetically. Everything he does is a prophetic utterance. There's a message. It's the beginning of a discussion. It's a love language. Healing is a love language. So love language is like I say, Israel, hello. Like there's a stop there. Israel, hello. Okay. And then I go, no, it's hello because I'm trying to speak to him. Okay? And it's not just the individual. It's hello. And it's like, wow, I feel like, oh, my God, my hand is shaking. Wow, what's happening there? And that's one aspect of it. And then from there... They say, hey, let me talk some more. And then, then you get employed into the community. Your, your, if, if he was sick, his suffering, his pain, everything he went through starts getting employed into the greater community. It becomes super irrogated and it becomes one of the stones now of Wow Life Church. It becomes a history of Wow Life Church so that he can do it again. It's, he plugs it in. Okay, healing has to do with a plugging in. Okay, he wants to heal you, but he wants to heal you because of everyone else. Do you understand? He wants to heal you, not for you, for everyone else. Do you understand it? That's really interesting. Really, Kirby, where do you get that from? Did you just see the gifts here? You see the gifts here? Okay, watch this, okay? What is that? All right, label, okay. Watch what, chapter, chapter 14, verse 12. Chapter 14, verse 12. This is amazing, okay? If you get these, all kinds of things happen, okay? Chapter 14, verse 12. You saw the gifts before? You saw all the gifts before? Okay, why are the gifts? Okay, here we are. Even so, you, since you're zealous for spiritual gifts, okay, let it be for edification, means building up, okay, of the church, church that you seek to excel. Wow. So if you want to heal or get healed, what is it for? Come on, what is it for? What is it for? Okay, if you want to have a gift of giving, you're a giver, what is it for? For the church. So without the community and the church, healing is very rare. Very rare. I've not seen it. Uh, because I'll tell you why. Healing is very interesting. It's an interesting concept, okay? Healing, okay, let's go back. Let's back, go back to this, what I discussed last time. What is the wages of sin? What is the wages of sin according to the Bible? Come on, shut it out. Come on, don't be scared of it. What is death? The wages of sin is death. So that means it works like this, that man, when he starts sinning, he starts collecting like a debt, like D-E-B-T, okay, like debt, same sounding word, right? Same word, right? That's exactly what happens. When man grows older and older, he starts collecting, and if he doesn't know God, okay, he starts collecting D-E-B-T, debt, which is death. Okay, and as he collects it, no one is there to forgive him for his sins. Okay, so finally, he hits a certain age, and depending on the level of debt, okay, he will die. The wages of sin is? Yeah, like DBT, debt. Yeah, because it's collecting. Okay, this is important to get. So why does, why does Jesus come? Jesus comes to forgive your debt. Okay, that's why the old King James is not forgive my sins. The old King James is forgive our debts. As we forgive others their debts. That's a beautiful word because it's Jewish. They understood that. They understood what it looks like when, when someone owes something. Okay? So you start owing people, and then finally they start, those debts are warranted for. There are curses for men throughout the world because of the wrong you've done, maybe to your wife, your husband, your whatever, and then to your friends and your family, and that's how you became successful, and suddenly you get sick and you can't make it. Okay? So when Jesus forgives your debt, he says in Matthew 9, 
that that forgiveness of your debt is equal to your healing. That's reasonable, right? Because when he forgives your debt, then you get healed. Wow, that's amazing, okay? So he doesn't consider healing separate from the forgiveness of debt. So if we are still struggling with a debt, with that comes different types of destruction. Okay? Now this is very interesting, so now, now listen very carefully. Very carefully. There's subtleties in what I'm going to explain to you. Okay. I've seen this so many times. I've stayed with tremendous people who heal and prophets and stuff like that and I've done many myself. I realized when someone is new, a new believer, a new Christian, he gets healed very fast. Okay? Just as on the first day he receives Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, immediately he can get healed. It's so easy, okay? Because immediately he gets to Jesus, the first thing he realizes is what? My debts are forgiven. Okay? So even if he's got cancer, or even if he's got like something like serious, like completely paralyzed, I've seen them get up immediately because he's a new Christian. Do you understand that? So immediately, bang, he's out. But I've seen that people who when you grow older, in knowing Jesus, yeah, they need to go to doctors. Yeah, 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 and I, and I recommend it as well. But watch this. But why is that? Ask the questions. When you ask the questions, you get the answers. God wants to answer those questions. But mature Christians, they don't get healed. They like they find it hard. And I never wanted to go there. I was like, no, well, I, even, if, even if I'm like, like eight years into knowing the Lord, I want to get healed by prayer. Okay, I, 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 I go to doctors as well. I, please understand, I go to all the doctors, but I want to get healed by prayer. I don't want to be desensitized by prayer. And so, when you navigate this, you'll understand this, okay? This is, this is amazing, okay? You'll realize that it's really, really interesting when you understand stuff like this. That as you grow in maturity, there's a demand on your maturity. Huh. So what was a sin before the drunkard, the adulterer, the sinner comes to church, he's got paralyzed, Someone walks up to you and says, your sins are forgiven you. Get up and walk. Immediately he can walk and get up. And what happens is, he stops his adultery. He stops his drinking or his alcoholism. Drinking is fine. Alcoholism is the problem. He stops his addiction. He stops all those things and he says, man, I'm clean. And now he's healed. Watch this. Watch this. But when you're going mature in the Lord and you grow and you're 10 years in the Lord, 5 years in the Lord, to whom much is given, much is required. Now, your sin might not be the addiction. Your sin might not be the adultery. Your sin might not be the, all the, the wickedness that you've been doing before. Your sin is not that because you're mature in the Lord. But still, what do you finally die of? Your sins. Because the wages of sin is death. But you finally die of your sins. But hey, but I don't have those sins. I've, I've stopped, I've stopped being addicted. I've now left that addiction away. I've stopped beating my wife up. I've, I've stopped all those things. So why am I still sick? There's still what they call sins. Okay? Now sins, the word, like Fiona rightfully say, is not a, it's, it's not a moral issue. It's a theological thing. But it starts in the heart. It's your mistrust in God. Did you just see that? And that becomes a sin. So just imagine, like when you're older, I'm not doing anything, I'm not doing anything wrong. This was, I'm preaching on stage. I'm prophesying so clearly I'm doing everything right, but I was still sick. And so I, my question was like, Lord, show me, Holy Spirit, show me the crevices in my heart that you still can consider that is not yours. The characters that are not yours. Because to whom much is given, much is required. My sin can be not giving Fiona a, a, a place to talk sometimes. Not, not me, unfortunately, like that. You know, sometimes, you know, when, when the husband is running ministry and Fiona says something, you can like, hey, you know, whatever. And Fiona always says, Sweetheart, don't correct me in front of people. She's like, sometimes I say, Fiona, that's wrong. Like, and, so, and this was the, in the beginning of our relationship. And don't you hate that when that happens? When your husband corrects you in front of people? Come on, ladies, you know what I'm saying, right? Because <laughs> I'm never wrong. <laughs> She's never wrong, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I used to do that. My, my thing could have been that. My, that's not like, a, like, you wouldn't even consider it a sin. A guy who's a complete addict, or a guy who's beating his wife up with something so wrong, he won't even consider that a sin because he can't see, he's desensitized. Do you understand that? He gets healed when he stops doing that. 
He gets healed when he stops beating his wife. He gets healed when, when he stops, uh, stops the sin that he was doing. Not beating his wife or beating someone else up. I used to do both. Okay? I was a bad guy. Okay? But God saved me. God redeemed me. So now I don't have to do any of those things. But I could be then not given a position to talk. I can be maybe rude to my wife. God will say, hey, you know what? That I don't consider as a righteous, fair thing for you to do. Now you've got power. You've got influence. I've raised you up. I kept my promises, Kay. What about your heart? Is your heart mine? To whom much is given, much is required. Is God putting the sin on you? No. You're being attacked by the enemy because of your injustice and your unfairness. You have left the covering. He will never put sin on you. He's wanting to heal you. But how does he heal you? He heals your heart first. Now just understand that iniquities, so he was wounded for my sake, wounded for my what? Transgressions. Wounded for my? Transgressions. Bruised for my? Iniquities. So he's died for everything. A wounded for transgressions is outside. A wound is outside, right? But you're bruised, bruised is inside, right? So you're bruised for my iniquities, the things that no one can see. The way I treat Fiona. No one can see that. You guys might not even notice that. Only Fiona might know that. It might be a private discussion. Yeah? And then, so, my God, but he was bruised for my iniquities. If I don't allow him to come and shed light and truth there, again, that doesn't start my healing. My healing journey starts when I look into my heart. And this is not to condemn anyone. Darlings, it's not to condemn you. Okay? I still get my flus. I still get sick. I still, I, we're human, right? We all get sick. I have, Fiona had a back, a back problem. Maybe she's not giving me an opportunity to talk. <laughs> Maybe I'm the victim here. Okay? <laughs> no, or, 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 no, I'm trying to say, I'm, look, we have been vulnerable for you guys. We have been vulnerable for your sake, guys, okay? Or maybe it's not that. Maybe she needs to be more responsible in the way she works out. She's a leader. Maybe God wants her to be more responsible. Maybe when we are not responsible, it's a simple, simple thing that we can get hurt. Huh? Which is, which is true. Okay? Maybe, these are not sins. So you're going to think, oh my God, these are not even sins. But how, God is not putting a back problem to you. It's a stupid thing. If you walk across the road, with, knowing that there is no traffic light, you can get hit. It's not a, it's not a sin, but it's a not understanding what we need to do at the right time. Okay? What happens... You know, we, we, I'll tell you what, you know, we used to do two Ironmans, uh, uh, two Ironmans, two Ironmans a year. Just understand this. Two Ironmans, do you know uh, the kind of toll that takes on our body? After doing two Ironmans a year, Fiona and I will sit together and we'll discuss and say, is this the right representation that we are giving our body? Because 60 people, 50 people, 20 people sometimes take part in Ironman with, with us, right? Like, is this the right representation as leaders we are giving our community? Those are, those are deep thoughts. Now, someone will think, oh, that's not a sin, Kirby. Like, oh, but no, you don't understand. You don't know that people follow us. People follow us. When we do something, they do something. Is that the right representation? If I don't consider that, hmm, that could be, that could be. The word sin means hamathiah. It doesn't mean sin like, oh, you're a sinner. The sin means you miss the mark. It means a guy who's taking a, a bow and shooting an arrow out, and he misses the target mark. That's what the word sin means. Do you, do you know that? Yeah, give, us, give, a, give a clap for that because that's important. Sin is not this grievous thing that churches say you're a sinner. Hamatiah in the Greek means a man who's, who's, who's poised to take a bow and arrow and tries to shoot the target, but he misses the mark. Wow. We could miss the mark if we were doing two iron mans and we take our whole, whole group to take, take, take two iron mans. I started fasting for a long time. Please understand this. For long times. Probably, probably broke all the records in fasting in the world. And then I started eating again. A lot, as you can see, okay? To put on muscle. I'm not fast. I'm not fasted for a long time. I'm not fasted for a long time. Why? Because of responsibility. I'm a leader. If I start talking about fasting, 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 all my people will be fasting. What kind of representation am I as a leader? To whom much is given, much is required. Do you understand that? Fasting has all kinds of problems. People can fast and lose uh, lose their body fat percentage. They can lose their, 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 uh, their electrolytes. Do you understand that? They can lose their muscle mass. 
Now, if I keep pushing that, pushing that, pushing that, do you think God is going to think I'm a responsible leader? To whom much is given, much is required. It was good for a season to teach people fasting, but immediately we need to be responsible. This is what it means to be a leader. What is it to be a leader in your house, in your home, in your areas? It's very important to ask the question, like justice and truth is the key. Yeah. And so healing starts first in the heart. Sickness first starts in the heart space, and then it becomes pathological. Okay? After a little while, if we don't deal with it, it becomes a pathology. It becomes in the body, stuck in the nervous system. Yeah. You understand it? And that time you need medicine. Don't now try not take medicine. From, you could have knocked it off there, but now if it's been knocked off there, once it becomes a pathology, now it's in the nervous system, go to the doctors, take medicine. But also, meet the priest. Yeah. Meet the ordained priest. And say, maybe I've been asking the Holy Spirit, you know, that this area in my life, and you don't have to give details. We're not here. We have no confession booth, and no one is recording anything. Okay, these are ordained pastors here. Right, come and say, you know what? I have this issue, you know, I just maybe... I've got a problem with my anger. I'm very rude to people. I control my staff. Hmm? Come on. Okay, and you come to church every day, but when you go to work, they can't see the church person there. How many of you are like that? Come on. I'm like that sometimes. Yeah? They don't see the church person. They say, oh, Kirby, the people go and work for Philip. I can talk with about this. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> You know, they say, oh, Philip, oh, Philip is such a darling. I mean, God loves him and Jesus loves him and he preaches so, he's such a good Christian, okay? And then they go work for him. <laughs> the amount of people I have to minister to who go and work for Philip. I mean, it's unbelievable. <laughs> and like, the first thing I say, like, yes, he's a, he's a great Christian, but he's also a astute business person. Don't just think you can go with grace and just sit around there and just do nothing. He's going to put you to task, Okay. Sometimes more, sometimes just like him. He's, he treats others like he treats himself. Yeah. Okay? And then I treat him to treat himself better, then you get a better chance. <laughs> no, that's the truth. That's the truth. That's the truth, guys. Okay? No, none of us is perfect. And when we finally die, we will die of our sins. Hmm? Or you can get healed and live long and strong. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's no condemnation. There's no accusation in what I'm telling you guys. I'm just saying, look at those areas, man. Look at, especially if you've known God for a long time, look at those areas. It's okay. As you look at those areas, maybe you get healed at church or a new doctor will come or something will happen or there's a new medicine that comes or something changes and you see a new again. It's a, it's a crazy thing. When you start seeing truth inside, you create truth outside. Yeah, yeah. And suddenly, the very, very technology that you need Suddenly, someone says, did you discover there's a new medicine? Or someone said, there's an Ayurveda doctor from somewhere, and he's doing some great things. And it's like, yes! Because I saw new here. I created new and fresh there. Is that, is that good? Yeah? So, yes. But what is it for? It's for the church. It's for the body. It's not for you. It's a prophetic time. It's like, it's a crazy thing. I watch this. Uh, I, I, I think one of the kings, you must, you must I, I won't have the story fully, but I'm not ready for a long time. But I remember one of the kings, they were sick. And the prophet goes to him and says, today, you, tomorrow you're going to die. You know, you're going to die of your sickness. And it says, at that point of time, he turns to the wall and he prays to God. I don't know whether I'm mixing two stories. I'm not sure. Okay. He, 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 prays to, he prays to God, but it's beautiful to see this, the synchronicity of it. He prays to the wall, he turns to the wall and prays and says, Oh Lord, Lord, haven't you seen my righteousness? Haven't you seen the things that are done for you? He reminds him of all the goodness that he's done. Okay. That's okay. That's good. Can't you see? Did I did this? I did this. And then the Lord was like, Okay. Yes, yes. I see. I see all this. I know all this. I know all this. Okay. But he says, Lord, come on. I have more purpose in you. Come on, use me more. Use me for the church more. Come on, I promise you, I'm, I'm going to lay my life down. I'll, I'll serve at the door. I know I'm a big shot, but I'll serve at the door. I'll come early to church. I'll help people out. I'll do everything. I'm, I'm going to live for you, Lord. And he, he says, God turns around to him, and he says this. I, I think in one of the, one of the uh, scriptures, he says, there's a plant. I love this one. There's a plant in your madam medulla. Yeah? What is that? Your, your garden. There's a plant in your garden. <laughs> Watch this. Go... Take the leaves of that and eat it and you'll be healed. That medicine. Wow. That's how you wear it, right there. But watch this. And I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Watch this. That plant has already been there. Wow. He's known the plant from his youth. He, he had the plant with him. Come on. Yeah. His eyes were open. Yeah. So people don't really understand. It's the, it's the kingdom of God 
is at hand. Say it with me. Come on. Say it's at hand. It's at hand. Come on. Stretch it out. It's at hand. My healing is at hand. What does it mean? The kingdom of God is at hand. It means your healing is here. It's at hand. But the problem is we don't have your, your success is here. We don't have the eyes to see. It's a, I mean, the, the, the tree has been growing in his own garden. Okay? But what was the key to the situation for him to see and hear about the tree in his garden that he could eat and get healed, this king? He had to turn and get a new perspective. The word turn to the wall means he turned to the places that he thought it was impossible to look at. He turned towards the wall, the places that are walled, can't no breakthrough. And he looked at it in a new perspective and said, oh God. And he started looking and, and, and mulling over it in a new way. And as he did, he heard the voice of God and then he could see the medicine was right at hand. Guys, it's at hand. You don't have to go far. What you need in your life is around you. You'll be surprised. I'll tell you, I'll tell you about Sanjay I, just for a moment of time. I, Auntie Janaki, who was a, who's a, uh, who, who, who comes, she have been missing her for a little while. You know Auntie Janaki, right? Who comes like, like grand old lady, right? She invited us to our house for dinner. Sanjay was there. Fiona was there. We were all there, okay? And we were just having dinner and I was just like, you know, doing what I had to do. And they were talking about, just understand this, they were talking about Sanjay's back and Sanjay's back needed to be healed. At that time, they were talking with decision to take, whether he had to go to surgery, Ravi is helping us with surgery in, the, in, in India, right? And uh, whether we're going to take, um, what is it, stem cell or surgery or whatever it is. While we're talking, Sri Lanka's top yeah. neurosurgeon, while they're talking, yeah. walks through the door, and Janaki says, this is the best neurosurgeon in the country. It's at hand. It's at hand. It's a plant in the garden. It's a plant in the garden. But what made it happen? Time. It's the timing. The plant is already there. You had it. It's around you. And she walks in, and she discusses, and then Fiona says, do you mind? And he says, I have the reports in the car. She said, bring the reports. Here you know, at the dinner, she's going through the reports and giving him advice. And he gets another opinion, another opinion, which he would have to go somewhere and find, but it came to him. Come on. It's healing, it's healing coming. Healing is coming. It's here, it's at hand. Call for rain when there is rain close by. Come on, guys. What an amazing story. When we went, Fiona and I were blown away. We could stop talking about it. We're like, can you believe God is so good? We've been praying for Sanjay every day. And there you go, a doctor walks in through the door, the best in the country, reads it and says, don't do this, this is what you got to do, and gives you the advice. What amazing hope we have. An amazing God who hears our prayers. Just amazing. We, we, we were praising God for it. Getting us out of the pattern. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God wants to heal you. But, and it's at hand. It's not far away. You don't have to go somewhere, shout out and cry out. And it's at hand right here. It can be the person next to you right now. But your heart posture to receive the healing. Everyone should be able to heal. But, 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 but can I have you up? Can, I, can we do that, that hymn? I love how Priska ministered that hymn. Yeah. 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 Come on. Can I have the awesome healing testimony? Come on. Now listen. Now listen, listen, listen. You're going to hear a, 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 a girl. This girl has got healed of all kinds of cancer, all kinds of things, right? She's a, she's a walking, talking miracle. But prophetic, when I say, she's a seer. Okay. <laughs> like, like, she got healed of all kinds. I don't know what she's going to say today. But, uh, but the fact of the matter is, it's at hand. Your healing is in the story. Yeah. Your healing is in the mouth of the person next to you. Next to <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Now, she's taking you into that realm for your healing, for your, for your process. Okay, come on. Yeah. This is also a, a cancer testimony. Yeah. Um, and it's for anyone who needs it. Yeah. Okay, come on, so come on, um, come on. I had... Come on. Um, it's a form of cervical cancer twice, long time back. Uh, but for the past few years, my reports, like I had to get monitored every year. Past few years, my reports have not been completely normal. Um, so there were abnormalities forming. And because it was low grade, they were just monitoring. Uh, and then, uh, so in June, June or July, I went for the screening test, and then uh, um, they said, no, you, you, need to, you need to sort this out. It's not, it's not okay. And I shared it with Fiona and Tammy and everybody. Um, after that, they said, come back in October 
to do another screening. So they said there are six, six screening tests to do, out of which two were not so great. And they said, I need to, I need to sort it out. And right. October 31st, I went for the other one. And on that day, before taking my test, the doctor was talking to me and she was like, listen, you need to prepare yourself mentally for the report that you might get. Wow. And uh, then she said, um, okay, we'll, we might have to go into a bit of a major surgery. And before that, we'll have to talk to the doctors at Maharagama, get them also there during the surgery. And we will decide while do the, doing the surgery, the extent of it. Um, we can't just tell you, but I want you to mentally prepare yourself for that. So I was like, okay. And then she did it. And then November, so every time I come here, I'm always raising my hand and running around for healing, yeah. okay? <laughs> like all the time. Yeah. Because I've had many. It's, it's actually, I've had many my whole life. It's like a miracle for me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then, um, so I got my reports last week. And, and she looked at it, it was normal. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. It was, it was normal. Amazing. Yeah. And she was just looking at it and then she started laughing and she's like, you seem to be, this is the thing. She said, you seem to be coming to the edge of danger and being saved by the bell the last moment. Wow. Like, yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Our God reigns. Yeah. Our God reigns. Yes. Our God reigns. Come on. And I just wanted to share that. Uh, she That's said, amazing. you have to still continue the test. Um, wow. It might recur, whatever. But yeah. it's like, I don't, I don't care. Just the fact that she said that was like confirmation for me. I know. Amen. I know. Because even the second time when I had it, I was supernaturally healed. Yeah. So, just wanted to share that for anyone who needs healing in Come their on, body. Just, just draw from it. Come on, come on. Come on, isn't that worth praising him for? Isn't that worth praising him for? Come on. Hallelujah. You know, finish the service. I just want to praise him. I want to take one moment to praise him. Hallelujah. 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 finish the service. I'm going to read you a scripture. Take a seat. And we'll finish with you healing someone today. You've got to praise him when you hear stories like that. This is not a choreographed church. I didn't even know. So many people get healed in this church. Some people, if you send me, they send me testimonies all the time you get testimonies. Please don't send me testimonies. I'm asking you, come and give the testimony. Come and give. You'll, you'll write to me. I honestly, once I read it, I get another one. Okay, so please come and say, can I have a Sunday service like Heshu just did? Because what an amazing, imagine if you went home without hearing the story. So many people get healed here. Okay, God's glory touches people. Just His glory. And people leave, but give those testimonies so that He can be now part of the church. Become a part of the church. It's a history. The history of the church. What happened to the screens? Okay, Matthew 9. Give me, yeah, give me two minutes. I'm going, I'm going. Give me two minutes. I'm going to get your testimony again. We're going for healing. I'm going to get it, okay? Matthew, Matthew 9, okay. Watch. Okay, okay, I'll be back. Matthew 9. A paralyzed man was brought to Jesus. Listen carefully. And he was left on the ground there. And he couldn't walk and he couldn't move. And then Jesus sees him. And Jesus goes up to him. Remember this. This is in context. There is a temple that sacrifices lambs and cows and all kinds of things while Jesus is doing this. And in this synagogue and temple that is doing this, they're doing it for the forgiveness of sins. So you can go to the temple with your lamb and your goats and your cows and they'll sacrifice it there for the forgiveness of sins. Do you get that? So when they bring the paralyzed man and Jesus goes up to him, he's sick. He needs a healing. But what does Jesus offer him? Does Jesus offer him healing? What does it say here? He says, son, be of good cheer. Guys, be happy. Because if you want your healing in your life, what does he say? Be of good sin. Be, be, be of good cheer. Because why? Because I forgive your sins. Wow. Do you understand that? Be happy because I forgive your sins. It and they get upset. 
And then some of the scribes said with themselves, this man blasphemes. Why? Because we've got a, a synagogue and temple that you need a sacrifice of a lamb or a cow, depending on how big your sin is. You can't just come and say, I forgive your sins. It's completely illegal. So they're angry at this. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, why do you think evil in your hearts? Which is easier, my church, to do? Which is easier, he says. To say, I forgive your sins? Or to say, take up your bed and walk or be healed? He says, listen carefully to these words. They're beautiful. And he says this. But that you may know, church. Verse 6. Read this with me. But that you may know. Read this with me. Verse 6. But that you may know that the Son of... Does he say Son of God? I'm going to say it again. Does he say the Son of God? He says, why did I say when you are sick? He said, I forgive your sins. Why? That you may know that the Son of Man, that's you, the Son of Man, is it there? Has power on earth to forgive sin. Wow. Just a moment of time. You're going to lay hands on the person next to you if they're sick. The person next to the person who's sick is going to lay hands. And what you're going to do is, you're going to say, I forgive your sins. Wow. That's all you're going to do. That person can be sick because of different things that the world is telling them. They might have done something and someone out there may be having a thought curse, a word curse, some, some things. It can be a small thing. It can be not paying salaries on time. Someone doesn't get paid. He leaves out. He gets angry with you. How many of you are big business people? And they get angry with you and they have this offense in their heart. You can take on a sickness because of that. And so the person next to you is going to say, I forgive you of that debt. The person next to you, not even that person. That's the power of the church. And as that happens, bang! The sin, the offense is broken over your life. And you'll be able to walk free of sickness and disease. Isn't that beautiful? That's what church is. Church has the power Man has the power to forgive sin. God has already forgiven you. You don't have to go to him. But you need to hear it from man. Man. The wages of sin is why we have sickness. Is it there? So he says, that you may know that the Son of Man has the power to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, arise, take your bed and go to your house. And he rose, he departed his house. This is how it ends. Listen carefully. This is what people understood from it. Now, when the multitude saw, they marveled and glorified God. Why? Today, you're going to glorify God because you see that man has a power. Man has been given such power. Not God. God already has the power. But that a man next to you can forgive you of your debts. Isn't that awesome? Yeah? Okay. So, guys, I want you to stand up. And if you, if you know, I want those who are sick to stand up. Those who have a pain in their body, any type of sickness, any type of sickness, just stand up, 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 just stand up. Any type of sickness in your body. You can be half sick, full sick, whatever it is. And the one next to you, normally I put the pastors up here because that's their job, their ordained job, is to come and forgive sins. Okay? I want the person next to you, and if there's two, three people, I want someone to go up to them. Someone go up to this. This one's, just go up to them, anyone. Go up to them and lay hands on them. Go up and lay hands and we'll tell you how to do it. Come on, guys. Get up. Church, get up and go to these people. These people need someone. Yeah. These people need someone. Go and lay hands on these people. Yeah. Yeah. Go, go, go and lay hands. Come on. Someone go. Someone go. Someone go. Someone go. Yeah. Get, don't, be shy. don't be shy. Get out of your seats. Come on. Release them from their deaths. So, Lord, you are the forgiver of sins. Listen to this song. Sing this song to him. Both the one who is praying and the one who needs prayer. Just sing this. Come on. Who had healed me. Come on, can we have the words up, please? You are the God. That, come on, sing it.
on, let's do it again. Let's do this again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your healing, Lord. You are the God that healed me. You are the God that healed me. You are the God that healed me. Yes, come on. Yes, come on. Give a big shout. Jesus, we thank you, we praise you. We're going to do this one more time. You are the God. You are the God that heals us. You are yes, God. The Lord that healed me. You are the God. Come on, just tell him. That he I got rained. I want you to check if you had a pain in your body. If you had a pain in your body, I just want to check. I want you to just a wave of hands. Just a wave of hands. If you had a pain in your body, I want you to check. I want you to check now. Just check right now. Just check right now. How is the pain in your body? Has anyone got healed? Just raise your hand if you feel healed. If you, if you got healed. I had a sinus congestion. It's, I feel like there's about 80% reduced. 80% reduced. Come on, give a big hand. He's the God that healed us. He's the God that healed us. What? I had this headache when I came in, and now I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel really light all over my body. Yeah. This heaviness has left. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Come on, come on, give it to Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah, God reigns. Hallelujah. Yes. Okay, I've not been able, been able to move like during worship even once or twice. Yeah. I've been having a terrible pain even today. Yeah. It's just gone. I just did it like two, three times. And I fell, I fell last night. Fell last I night. fell on my spine, my back last night. Wow. And there's no pain. Wow, come on. Isn't God uh, awesome? Who else? Who else? So I was diagnosed with diabetes last year with a 10.5 A1C, which yeah. was very dangerous. I could yeah. have died. Yeah. Um, I sat with uh, Prophet and Profi within three months, it came down to 5.6 or wow. something, right? I just followed only one thing that wow. Prophet told me, and uh, I'm pregnant. Yes. I had uh, gestational diabetes when I was not diabetic in my first yeah. pregnancy. Yeah. 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 I was on insulin from month six yeah. Yeah. and very high doses right. of that, metformin. It's, it's more than good. Like than good. My, my yeah. A1C is continuously uh, controlling awesome. Awesome. and I'm not on insulin. That's I'm amazing, on. come on. I got rains. Come on! I could stand tiptoe yeah. today, yes. and it's now I'm standing, standing tiptoe. Yeah. She's standing on her tiptoes. She couldn't do that. Come on, give her, give God, give Jesus. I got rains. What happened? Yeah, I had a pain running down my leg when I came. Yeah. Now I don't have pain's the pain. Gone, pain's yes, gone. gone. Come on, anyone else? Come on. Asthma pump so I can breathe without having to. Wow, so you, would, you want asthma pump for a long time? Yes, yes, I have it since, uh, since two, three weeks since I've been here. Yeah, and so now it's gone? You, you're not using it anymore? I'm not using it. It's, what I mean. it's healing for you. If you have asthma, healing is coming to you right now. If you have asthma, right there at the back, right there at the back. Come on, yes. can, you see, can you see what God is doing? Can you see what God is doing? Come on, just a I prayer. Thank Lord. I thank one minute, one minute. I had a one minute, one minute. Guys, I didn't lay hands on anyone. I want you to understand it. You laid hands. It is your inheritance. It is not right that one man stands in front healing people when the church is supposed to heal. This is our inheritance. And thank you for taking it back. Thank you for taking your position. Thank you for being the church. Thank you. Come on. So I had a tight muscle pain on my yeah. strip, on my shoulder. Yes. And I just couldn't move my yes. sort of a stretch back. Yes. It's good. It's gone. gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Oh, that's so good. That's amazing. I've been having this terrible allergy. Yeah. And I was quite embarrassed because I was like, all yeah. over. Yeah. It's all gone. Allergy is gone in Jesus' name. If you have an allergy right now, in Jesus' name, we cancel it out. Our God reigns. 
God, I came yeah. with manic depression, yes. remember? Yes. And you laid God. hands on me. Yes. And so I told you all I was on the meds for, given for three weeks, yes. which I took for a month. Yes. And that was a while ago. Yes. I completely have gone you off the meds. The meds. And you stopped the meds. And, and I'm not going through any manic that's, depression. That's God. awesome. Sorry. That's awesome, Shaman. Depression leaves now. If anyone is depressed right now, it leaves now. In Jesus' name, our God reigns. Our God reigns. Come on. You deserve the glory, God. You deserve all the glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. I've, I've, I've had an excruciating pain in my heel yeah. for eight weeks. Yeah. Right? I, I didn't know what that was called. Yeah. Ashi told me it's called plantar fasciitis. Yeah, that's First right. time. It's a yeah. funny name. Yes. Uh, I haven't yet seen a physio. I've wow. been struggling with it. Yes. Uh, in the morning especially. Yes. Really bad. I come yeah. limping. Yes. Eight weeks. Eight weeks. This week, Prophet, with your teaching on the word. Wow. I made appointments with physios and I, and I visualized going. I still didn't go. Amen. On Friday, yeah. I got up in the morning. 80, 90 percent. Come on, gone. Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Come on. Yes. Come on. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. Let's worship his awesome God. Jesus, we love you. We praise you. You reign. You reign.